All right, everybody, Peyton Meisner comes alive, episode number two. First of all, thank you to everybody who watched the first episode with Carver uh, about a week ago, two weeks ago now. Um, I got a lot of great support, got a lot of good reviews, and um, I'm glad to hear that. It got a lot more views also than I expected. I think it has like 60-some views, and all I did was just put up my Snapchat story. I didn't even really promote it a whole lot, which I plan on doing uh, here more in the future. Uh, so that was great, and um, I guess I don't really don't have a certain format or vision for the podcast uh the last episode the first episode with carver was a 40 some minute video with us just talking about a certain topic uh, but i also just kind of want to talk you know more on a daily basis about you know different things sports and uh and whatnot but yeah who knows um for now i'll figure it out as i go on and in the meantime we'll just have fun with it uh, one thing i do want to talk about though is uh give a little recap after every iowa basketball game in recent years i've started to get way more into iowa basketball than i have iowa football which is something I never would have expected when I first was becoming an Iowa fan. Um, I've just gotten really way less into college football as a whole and probably I'd say the last five, six, seven years really, especially in the last like four to five years. Um, not trying to sound full boomer on this take here, but the realignment has really has been a big factor in it. Uh, a lot of these old traditions that you had, yeah, it was, football was, college football was more regional. ACC kind of meant something. The Big 12 meant something. Pac-10, or Pac-10, Pac-12 meant something. Now you have teams all over the place. Regions are really going away. A lot of the traditions are starting to go away. You know, watching Michigan-Ohio State last week, that game was absolutely beautiful. Um, just for the all the tradition that's behind it, the meaning behind it each year, uh, it really is one of the best rivalries in sports. It's right up there with Duke and North Carolina. I think it's right up there with the Yankees-Red Sox. Uh, it's just incredible, and a lot of these old rivalries that we see like this are starting to go away. You know, Oklahoma's going to the SEC, Texas is going to the SEC. Um, eventually, you know, USC will be in the Big Ten, or Big, uh, yeah, in the Big Ten. UCLA will be in the Big Ten. Some of those Pac-12 rivalries are going to be gone. I don't know. I just haven't really been into college football lately. Also, there's really about two to four, maybe five teams in a year on a given year that can win it all. Recruiting has drastically eliminated the parity between the elite powerhouse programs and the rest of the field, which is something you really don't see in college basketball. Um, in college football, it's really dominated by Ohio State. It's dominated by Clemson every year. Georgia's kind of in that mix. Um, but really, that's it. Um, LSU's kind of been that had that weird year in 2019. They're kind of the oddball. It's really just the same three programs winning it all. Recent, I, mean, I think the last seven years, I think five of those seven um, come have come between Ohio State, Clemson, and Alabama. Uh, whereas you look at college basketball, it's more of a long season. The, t the top teams from each year change on every given year. You still have your traditional blue, blood blue bloods. You'll still have, you know, Duke will always be good. North Carolina is always going to be good. Michigan State, Kansas, those teams are always going to be good. But that doesn't mean they're going to win it every single season. Uh, there's a lot more parity in college basketball. Teams and programs can rise in rank. They can go down. Um, it's really, it's just a lot more fluctuating. Uh, and then you have more mid-majors who can really make runs, which you don't see in college football. I just think the, I just say that the product as a whole in college basketball is just a lot better. Also, March Madness is, in my opinion, the best sports event of the year. So uh, getting back to Iowa basketball, you know, they're expected to have another successful season. Uh, There's kind of some question marks as to whether they can repeat uh, to quite the same success they had last season. Lost a couple of key players. Obviously, Keegan Murray going to the NBA. Jordan Bohannon is finally gone. Uh, the big question mark is who's really going to step up. Chris Murray looks like he is legit. Um, he was playing just about as good as Keegan was at this time last year, I'd say. So uh, he's really as merged as the number one. The biggest question mark so far early on in the season, and granted we haven't played a whole lot of games yet, is who's going to be the number two guy. Uh, I think it's going to be Tony Perkins. We'll see. He hasn't really got off to a great start yet. Patrick McCaffrey definitely could be a guy like that. Uh, Rabacha could easily be a guy like that. Sanford could step up and be, you know, a second scorer for us. Uh, a lot of things still have to play out, but what it looks like it's going to be another successful season. I think it's easily. I think it easily can be said that it's NCAA tournament or bust. I think we're much better than the NIT team. NIT team this season. Uh, so I and I have high expectations. I think, you know, last year winning in the Big Ten tournament was really a big step forward for the program. Uh, in the past, uh, we had been terrible in the Big Ten tournament. 
uh, hadn't really had any success at all. So we finally broke that streak. Then, of course, yes, we did lose to Richmond in the first round. So the, the drought in the NCAA tournament still continues, still looking for that Sweet 16. But uh, winning the Big Ten tournament was a big step forward, and I think we can improve off that uh, as we move on into the future here. So far in the season, the only true tests that we've had have come against Seton Hall, in which we look good. And uh, also our last game before tonight against TCU uh, in the championship game of the Emerald Coast Classic, which we did not look good. TCU blew us out. Uh, but TCU is a legitimate team who has two starters out right now and are still playing great basketball. They gave Arizona an all-time scare in the NCAA tournament last year in the second round. Easily could have been a Sweet 16 team and uh, maybe beyond, too. I think they're going to be contenders in the Big 12 this year. Uh, so far, it's early, obviously, but they look like they could be one of the best teams. I think they could easily be right up there uh, with the Baylor or maybe even the Kansas this season. Uh, tonight, uh, we had Georgia Tech. Um who will be our last ever opponent in the Big Ten ACC Challenge as the media deals get rearranged. I think the Big Ten has now reached agreement with the SEC uh, to have a challenge with them. So this is the last Big Ten ACC Challenge, which is another thing of realignment kind of brings away too as well. It does affect basketball too a little bit in some regards. Uh, but tonight, Georgia Tech, not a good team. Uh, which kind of sucks. You know, usually in the Big Ten ACC Challenge, you can get a solid non-conference game that you can look back at the end of the year at your resume and be proud of. But this year, this draw sucked. Georgia Tech finished 14th in the ACC last year out of 15 teams. They're not going to be good again this year. Hawkeyes were, I believe, 15 and a half point favorites coming into tonight. They did end up covering by 16. Uh, way to go. I think that we got that in the last bucket of the game. So if you bet on the Hawks tonight, you won. Uh, but Eli, yeah, back to Georgia Tech. This win really didn't mean much tonight. All we had could really ask for was a good performance, which is what we got. I don't expect Georgia Tech to really be a quality win uh, at the end of the season. So we had, to, we had to look good tonight. After a loss, we had to come out, get a win, represent the Big Ten Conference well, and get a victory uh, moving forward uh, to a big next, next week, which I'll get to later here. But immediately from the start of the game, we had a big change in the lineup. Well, this is the, really the first change of the season we saw so far with Peyton Stanford, Peyton Stanford going to the bench for Aaron Ewis. Honestly, I kind of like this move, especially after the loss last Friday to TCU. I understand the idea of having to want to have to want to have an all big lineup with Stanford in the lineup, but Stanford has really kind of struggled a little bit to start the season. And honestly, I think his role will be a lot better for him uh, coming in with that second unit as he. Um, well, probably that main score when they're in when the second team is in for the starters. He's probably going to be the main target to get points for that second unit. I think it's going to be a good role for him. Uh, that also allows Desante Bowen to the really show out in that second unit. Right now, uh, previously it had been him and Yaron Ewis, really two two point guards uh, at the same time in there. Now, if Ewis in the starting five when um, he gets replaced there by Bowen in the second unit, Bowen can really show up and be that true number one point guard for that second unit. Uh, the first half, we completely dominated Texas Tech on the glass and in second chance points. They just could not handle our size. They had no answer for Chris Murray, who was easily the best uh, best player on the court. Uh, let's be honest, Murray single-handedly torched them in both the first half and the second half. He had a double-double at halftime with 15 points and 14 boards. Uh, 15 boards. Urbacha also feasted on that small lineup. Conor McCaffrey came in, canned a couple of threes. Uh, he's really started to shoot the ball better these last two seasons. Then the zone defense forced Georgia Tech in a lot of bad shots. They had a lot of ugly possessions, a lot of turnovers, a lot of just poor shots, really not high percentage shots. So the zone defense looked good. We were changing defenses up on them all around. They just had no answer. Uh, smart move. It was good. It was a good game plan all around for uh, the Hawkeyes tonight. They really got after Georgia Tech, made them look uncomfortable. And I was proud of the way the coaches responded after a, kind of a tough loss. And a game that I thought we probably should have had going to that. I thought we should have beat TCU. They do look really good, uh, but I don't know. I think they got that game was right there for the taking. So I was, that was one thing I really liked in the first half was I saw that the coaching was a lot more focused in this game. Uh, then in the second half, it was still uh, the Chris Murray show. He could not be stopped. It was great to see after he struggled heavily against TCU. It was a bounce back game for sure. It might be, you know, looking back in the season, it might be the best performance of the year. Murray balled tonight, flat out. 31 points, 20 rebounds. Grabbed a great rebound there late in the second half while he was on his back still. Kicked it out. 
I mean, I love Chris Murray. He's picking up right where Keegan left off, and that's that's awesome to see. Also, Robacha cooked in the cooked down low in the paint in the second half as well as the first half. He finished with 13 and 7. Perkins had 11 points. Patrick had a quiet nine points. He's still struggling a little bit to shoot the ball, but he's a scrappy young player. I think he'll get it figured out. He had a quiet nine, so I think he's really gonna break out here eventually. I can just feel it coming. And then also Connor McCaffrey played a ton of minutes tonight. Finished with a double-double, 10 points, 10 rebounds, and he played for 31 total minutes and was on the floor nearly the entire second half. Uh, however, Bowen did not play as much as I'd like. He only got in for six minutes. I think he's really again, he's going to be a young star. It might take a little bit for him to develop, but I think, he, I think when it's all said and done, I think he's going to be a better point guard than Ulysses. We'll have to see, uh, but I, I, I wish he would have played more tonight. I think tonight would have been a good opportunity for him to really show out and get some good looks. Uh, I don't know. I'd like to see him play a little bit more going forward. Dixon and Agundale did not get in tonight, which isn't really shocking. Dix hasn't really played a whole lot, and Agundale, honestly, they just come in when they need a big body. And um, Rabacha was playing fine tonight. Chris Murray was playing fine tonight. They didn't really have any need for Agundale, especially the, were, the way they were playing on offense. They got the uh, up-tempo offense going, fast break tempo. Agundale just wouldn't really fit into that, so unfortunately he didn't get in tonight, even though I thought he's, I think he's improved a lot. He's looked pretty good so far early in the season, especially for the role that he's going to have to play on this team. Uh, but yeah, overall, tonight's game isn't really worth looking that much into. Georgia Tech, like I said, I don't expect them to be really anything um, other than a bad loss on a resume. I don't think the win's going to amount to much. Uh, however, though, it did add a win to the Big Ten's column in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. And it also kind of serves as a nice buffer game. It's the only game we have this week before we get into next week, which is going to be probably one of the most toughest weeks we will face in the entire season. Uh, definitely the toughest week of the non-conference season uh, in which we have games against Duke on the road a week from today, on, uh, on the road in Tuesday, next Tuesday in Cameron Indoor Stadium. And then following right that, the Seahawks game against a very good Iowa State team on Thursday at home. And then we already jump into conference action with Wisconsin coming in at Carver Hawk Arena um, on Sunday, which should be a winnable game. Uh, so a good Duke team, a non-conference game. It's really one of the biggest non-conference games, I'd say, in the Fran era. We played uh, some big team, big names before. I think we played North Carolina a time or two. But this is really feels like the biggest matchup I can remember since Fran's been here in the non-conference. So I'm excited for that one. That's a huge game. Every every Hawkeye fan, I don't think I think could not believe we actually you know managed to get Duke on the schedule. That's great for the program. If we can beat them, that would be insane. And I think it's a winnable game. I really do. It's going to be a tough environment, but I think Chris Murray could really show up in that game. That would be huge if we can come in and get a win next week um, against Duke. And then of course Iowa State. We know what that means. Got to get a win there. They have a good team there. Probably won't be favored in that one, even though we are at home. But again, it's a winnable game. And we have played well uh, in this series at home. On the road, not so much. Um, again, Chris Murray will probably be the best player on the court. And uh, when you have a guy like that, you can win just about any game. So if we can win one of those two games between Duke and Iowa State, that'll be great. And then looking at Wisconsin, I think that's got to be an automatic win. Uh, they lost tonight to, uh, I believe, Wake Forest by three. They didn't look very good. I don't, I don't know. I don't think Wisconsin's that good this year. I definitely think we're better than them. I don't even put that as a toss-up game. I think that's a win. That's a game you have to have against Wisconsin to start the Big Ten season. I think you got to pick up a win there. So that's what I have on the Hawkeyes tonight. Really, all in all, just a game you got to win. And we did that tonight. Looked good. Also, of course, got to shout out the United States of America. Big victory in the World Cup today against Iran. We are moving on, finishing second in the pool. Um, big victory today, draw against England, draw against Wales is a little disappointing, but all in all, it's a good showing from a young team. I think, you know, for me, especially, I, I noticed that I, I forgot really how much of a big deal the world cup is since the United States didn't play in it uh, four years ago. I really didn't watch much of it. And I just, honestly, I forgot how big of a deal the world cup is. This was huge. This was a great win today. I, I honestly, I think I'm going to look back and I'm not even, you know, I'm a ca very casual soccer fan, but it just it felt like a big win. I think that's something we're going to look back and be really proud of as a country. Uh, as a sports fan, I think that was a huge win today. I love that. I love when U Team USA shows up in any sport. And this was a big one today. I think it really could help put United States soccer back on the map. Uh, the, you know, not missing the, or make, not making the World Cup last, last time around. It felt like, I think it was 2004. 
Olympics with the men's basketball team that finished with the bronze. It kind of just like sent a shock in the system. It's like, we got to fix this. This is broken. This is not acceptable for USA sports. We got to be better than that. And then we've won gold ever since then uh, in basketball. Not saying that I think the U.S. you know is going to be winning the World Cup anytime soon, but I think it, I think we could really take the next step up into be in the upper echelon of some of these teams. I mean, look how young this team is. The coaching is finally figured out. It was really a mess the last time around. The coaching I don't remember the coach's name, but he got dismissed pretty quickly right after that. So I think they got things figured back out. I'm proud of Team USA today. Big victory. Also, Tyler Zumba was being a dipshit tonight and was giving uh, Big Ten fans in our group chat shit about the Big Ten's performance in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. So I want to go game by game and break this down and analyze uh, where we stand going into tomorrow. So there were two games last night in the Big Ten ACC Challenge, the last Big Ten ACC Challenge perhaps ever. Virginia Tech beat Minnesota 67-57. to Minnesota is the worst team in the Big Ten this year by far. Northwestern is better than them, and they lost their only good player. So I don't care about that loss. Uh, Virginia Tech, I think, is also pretty good this year. So uh, don't really care about that one. So there you go. Uh, big uh, ACC won, Big Ten zero. Then Pittsburgh demolishes Northwestern 87-58. to Again, Northwestern sucks. I don't care about them. Pittsburgh also sucks too. That, it's a, that is the battle of mid. It doesn't matter. But either way, ACC 2, Big Ten 0. Then uh, going into tonight, Maryland dominates Louisville. So you can go the other way now. Um, Louisville is terrible. They're not good. So a 25-point win, but what does it really mean? Either way, it's the first victory uh, for a much better Maryland team. So now it's ACC 2, Big Ten 1. Uh, then the next game tonight, double overtime victory for Clemson. 101-94 for Penn State. So now it's what? AC3-3, Big Ten 1. All right, let's look, analyze these two teams. Penn State, also not good. They probably won't make the NIT. If they do, they'd be lucky. Clemson, I think they're also NIT team-ish. Iowa beat them, but they don't look very good. Again, those, that doesn't really matter much to me. That doesn't mean anything. Those, two, those teams aren't really relevant in either conferences. Either way, ACC3, Big Ten 1. Here we go. This is a game that matters. Illinois throttles Syracuse 73-44. That's an ass-kicking. Syracuse, led by Jim Beheim, they're a good team. He's always got a solid program. So that's a game that matters, and Illinois showed up. Um, so there we go. Big Ten 2, ACC 3. All right, now we get to Wisconsin and Wake Forest. I talked a little bit about that already. Wake Forest beats Wisconsin. It was a back-and-forth game. Um, I don't think these two teams are very good either. I think Wisconsin might sneak in the NCAA tournament, but I think they're more of an NIT team. They're right on the edge. I think the same about Wake Forest. Uh, it means a little bit. We'll see. It, it, could be, it could end up being two good teams. They could end up being two average teams. And they won by three. Okay, Big Ten is so far, and their victories have handled them the ACC if they win they sneak one out so now we have ACC 4 Big Ten 1 Big Ten 2 rather and then the last game oh, second to last game of the night was Iowa beating Georgia Tech 81 to 65 we handled them in the first half we handled them in the second half uh, so now we stand with what now three to the Big Ten we got ACC 2 Ten one, C C three, C two, C four. That's four to three. We're down four to three now in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. And the last game of the night was Virginia over Michigan. This was this was one of the marquee matchups of the whole challenge. Virginia is off to a great start. They're ranked number three in the nation. The new poll came out yesterday. Uh, Michigan not ranked, but probably should be. We'll see how the the ranking shake out. I think Michigan's a top twenty team for sure uh, when it's all said and done. Um, then Michigan had an 11-point lead in the half at, at halftime and blew it in the second half. Virginia's a good team. Uh, you know, I'll give them credit for that. That's a big victory for the ACC. But again, it came down to the wire. So far, the victories for the Big Ten, they're demolishing them. We have outscored, so far in this challenge, we've outscored the ACC big time. They won a couple of tight games. Okay, I'll give them credit. So we stand uh, going into the final night. We're down 5-3. to three. Let's look at the games tomorrow. Duke is at home against Ohio State. They're favored by six. I think they'll win. 
Um, Duke drop in the rankings. They've lost, I think, a time or two now. But they're still better than Ohio State. So now you have ACC 6-3, to three, in my opinion. Uh, then Purdue against Florida State. Florida State's horrible. Purdue has jumped up to number 5 in the country. So there's a victory there. Uh, now we're down 6-4. to four. Then it's a toss-up between Rutgers and Miami. Miami had a good run in the tournament last year. But Rutgers is still a very good team. I think it's a toss-up. It is at Miami. But uh, I think the Big Ten and one of these close games is finally going to pull through here. I think Rutgers is going to get a victory. That puts us down 6-5. to five. Uh, Indiana at home against UNC. This is really Indiana's first game of the season where they really have a chance to show out for the country. I think they're legit. I think a lot of people still think of them as frauds. And I understand uh, Indiana, I still think, is a blue blood. But they have struggled, in my lifetime at least, since Bob Knight has left, it's been a, kind of a nightmare for them. They've had some good, decent finishes this season, but nothing crazy. I think this is their year. I think they'll beat North Carolina, who's struggled so far in the season. Uh, that puts the Big Ten now at 6-6 six to six with two games left. Um, and then you have Nebraska at home against Boston College. I think Nebraska will improve this year. I think they're definitely better than Northwestern and Minnesota for sure. Boston College, nothing great. Nebraska at home, I think they win. I think the Big Ten is now up 7-6. to six. And then you have another toss-up game. Notre Dame is at home. They had a good NCAA tournament last season. Michigan State ranked number 20. Uh, Notre Dame is unranked, but Michigan State is not the favorite. Or actually, they are the favorite. They're favored by two. But still, though, on the road, Notre Dame could really give them fits. That's a toss-up, too, but I think Michigan State's a better team. I really do. And, you know, everyone who knows me knows I'm a pretty big Notre Dame supporter. I like Notre Dame. Uh, sometimes I can be biased towards them, but I think Michigan State wins. I think the Big Ten will win the ACC Challenge 8-6. to uh, Either way, that Miami-Rutgers game could be a toss-up. It could be 7-7. Seven to seven. But as it stands right now, I still think the Big Ten's in prime position. So, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see who's talking tomorrow, Zumbo. I have a feeling the Big Ten is going to pull this one out. 